Let's look at a broad range of temperatures on the absolute scale. Here I've listed several. The interior of the sun, for instance, 10 to the 8th Kelvin, a very high temperature. As we go down in temperature, we can go past the surface of the sun, tens of thousands of degrees, the melting point of tungsten, about 1,000 degrees Kelvin. Here's some familiar temperatures. The boiling point of water, 373 Kelvin, 100 degrees Celsius. Melting point of water, 273. Sublimation point of carbon dioxide. That's where dry ice goes from the solid to the gas, about 170, 195 Kelvin. The boiling point of liquid nitrogen, 77 Kelvin. The boiling point of liquid hydrogen, the boiling point of liquid helium, both listed here, 4 degrees Kelvin for liquid helium. That's a very ideal gas. That is, it behaves ideally, it stays a gas all the way down to 4 degrees above absolute zero, and then condenses into a liquid. So that's a gas that behaves ideally over a broad range of temperatures. Now, you can cool things below this 4 degree Kelvin mark, say in a dilution refrigerator, a, a few thousandths of a degree, Laser cooling is an effect where you take gas samples, very, very, very dilute gas samples, almost a vacuum, and use lasers to confine them and slow them down. If you slow down particles, you reduce their temperature. We'll always associate the speed of molecules in a sample with their temperature. Higher temperature, more speed. Some of the coldest temperatures ever achieved are in a Bose-Einstein condensation. That's where you do laser cooling and magnetic trapping and get molecules to virtually stop, in this case, atoms of beryllium, to virtually stop in a sample and an effective temperature of 10 to the minus 8th Kelvin, one of the lowest temperatures ever achieved. Of course, we can't go to negative temperatures on our absolute scale, so temperatures very close to zero, a few billionths of a degree, is as low as we can achieve.